Hello lovely people of the internet. Sorry I have disappeared. I said that I was going to film videos. But then I had a dermatitis outbreak and didn't wear makeup for five or six weeks in there. So I'm back. And today we are going to recap what ended up being my April and May makeup basket. Because as I said there was about five weeks in there that I didn't wear makeup. So this still was only about a month's worth of stuff. So let's talk about primers. Got the First Aid Beauty Pour de Gone Matte Primer and the MAC Prep and Prime Natural Radiance. These are still both going strong and will still be in the next one. I like them both. This obviously for a more mattifying and this for... This isn't super luminous. It's slightly more hydrating but it does still keep me matte. So it's my kind of hydrating primer. Natural Radiance, not super dewy. It's a yellow tone. That's what gives you the radiance, the brightening effect. Really like these. For foundation, we were using the MAC Pro Longwear with the Cover FX Custom Cover Drops. And oh my goodness, I remember why this was my Holy Grail foundation combination for so long. This just looks so good on the skin. It, the custom cover drops do mattify the skin down a little bit. Um, so something like Pro Longwear, which is a little... Again, keep in mind of earlier skin. This isn't super hydrating. It's more of a satin. But this does matte it down a little bit while adding a bit more coverage. And it just wears so beautifully throughout the day. It looks fantastic. Mm, beautiful combination if you haven't tried it. Even though I know Cover FX is now a pain to find. Uh, the Becca Under Eye Corrector, if you've seen me do one of these before, you know that for me this is a little bit too emollient and not enough coverage, so I do only wear this with my full coverage, more matte concealer such as the Jouer, Jouer Essential High Coverage Concealer, which is a high coverage, more uh, matte foundation, matte concealer, so it just kind of balances out. A little bit more hydration from this, a little bit more brightness to battle the full coverage matteness of this. Alright, powder. I had used this a little bit, but I hadn't really formed opinions on it. But oh my goodness, the Glossier Wowder is absolutely beautiful all over the face. Okay, my skin looked so good these months, besides the dermatitis freakout. But my base looked fantastic. This whole combination was beautiful. This set me down, but it didn't make me too matte because, we, again, we've been in April, May, so it has cooled down. It's definitely winter hit before it was winter. It is now June. It is winter. It is cold. So I can deal with some more. I say that as I have the Tom Ford Soft Matte Foundation on. with, um, But I have MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural, which is what gives me that little more freshness to the skin but this did really well at setting me down not making me move but still not drying me out heaps so definitely a good winter powder or something to pair with my more mattifying foundations all right cheeks I don't usually know if I do cheek I haven't filmed one of these in two over two months and I haven't filmed at all in eight weeks so Cheeks, uh, bronzer, and one of my highlighters, the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow Face Sculpt and Highlight in Fair Medium. This bronzer is so beautiful on the skin, and when you see what I have in my makeup basket for June, you'll understand. This is beautiful. If you are fair skinned, this bronzer is divine. This highlighter is very natural. I have full on glow today. But when I do want something a little bit more natural, this highlighter is really beautiful. I like it a lot. Very nice. And the other highlighter is the Dior uh, Precious Rocks 001. This is a limited edition from... Gosh, fine. I don't want to know how old this is. No, it's got to only be three years ago. Four years ago? We think it'll be four years ago this coming Christmas. This stuff is divine. It is a nude base. 
I swatched all of this for you in the intro video, so that's where it is. But it is this nude base with this gorgeous just sh sheen to the skin. It's like a wetness. It's stunning. It's a little bit of micro glitter in it, but it doesn't look chunky on the skin. Stunning. And then for blush, we had the MAC Glow Play blush in Blush Please. Uh, spoiler alert, I'm doing a haul as well today because first time I've worn makeup in ages. I'm going to get some filming done. And I went to the Estee Lauder corporate store and I looked trying to find more of these. But the only ones they had were a hot pink and a deep plum. And that's just not me. But I really want to get, I think it's natural. There's, an, I, there's another colour I really wanted this because I love this formula. If you know me, I've never been big into creams because of my oily skin. Again, stay tuned for that haul to see another surprise. But this blush is divine. It sits on the skin. It blends over powder beautifully. And it lasts wonderfully. I freaking love it. And then the other blush for when I was going something a little bit more warmer toned. We were going for Kylie blush in close to perfect which is just a really nice peachy pinky color um yeah it's just a traditional blush um pretty standard nothing to write home about but it's really nice it's nice all right eyes eye bases we had the labiot wine eye glitter in 01 and it is this rose gold colour. This is super pretty. This is really nice. I have used it as a base and I have used it tapped over as an eye topper. And I like it both ways. I do think um, because it's a little bit sheerer, I wouldn't use it on its own. I definitely use a powder either on top or top it over a powder. Uh, but both ways work really well. It doesn't mess funny if you tap it over and it's a really nice rose goldy color um and then the other cream was the victory cream shadow eye to eye from trini london and this is very similar to the um to the charlotte tilbury color i have i think i t shared them in my um intro video and really i i did only use this once and it was the exact same way I used the Charlotte Tilbury of all over the lid, blended into the crease, looking gorgeous one-stop shop. And then I tapped the um, Olympic Super Shock Shadow from the Royal Beauty Christie Colourpop collection over the top to give it some sparkle. And it was a divine eye look. This I used heaps. It is the most perfect toppery glittery shade. I did reach for this more than the Labiot because of that. Beautiful. And again, one thing I only ended up using once, but stunning, is the Elsie Jewels eyeshadow in Morganite. Again, I have issue with this being called Morganite and being silver and not having a lot of pink to it because Morganite is a pink stone. It is the stone in my engagement ring. Like, I can talk on this. <laughs> um, so it bugs me that there's not enough, in my opinion, there's not enough pink for this to be called Morganite. It is definitely a traditional cool-toned silvery thing. There's yeah, not enough pink. It looks pink, like it has pinky purple tones in the pot, but then it doesn't on the eye. But it's still a really pretty eye product. That's just my one caveat. It shouldn't be called Morganite. <laughs> For eye base, we used NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer in Chantilly. Chanty. Um, this is too light for me as a concealer, um, so I use it as an eye base and it works really well. Um, palettes, Huda Topaz Obsessions. Um, definitely looking for that warm autumn vibe with this one. And definitely got it. Um, I did, I think I only used it twice. This comes off being more like, it looks like it's going to be champagne, but it ends up being really orangey. So I thought I'd get something a little bit of a softer gold, champagne gold there. It's definitely orangey. This pinky one, I also thought I might get away with a little bit. Not as orange, but it still runs very 
you're gonna get a real warm eye with this no matter what you do um, this shade here that looks like you might be able to see it your crease don't it's just very peachy if you go into this knowing you're gonna get a warm eye no matter what fantastic but yeah it just it looks like there should be a bit more dimension in here and there's not um, this is the only one of the color based um, Huda palettes that I have I have the nude light medium and dark um, and while they are very much in their color family and you do very much get a, it's just yeah it looks like you should get more variation from this than you do I think that's my thing it hasn't stopped me from buying the gold obsessions palette and hoping that I think because this was just so much more orange and I was hoping for more gold that I think the gold obsessions will make me happier the NARS ignited palette so this has three mattes down the side here so everything is very based in this but then there is a lot of shine with these shimmers and some of them definitely need a glitter glue to get that shine to stick um, but man some of them are just beautiful so like this one here is very much one of those ones where you need a glitter glue because it is mostly glitter not a lot of base but it's stunning and they're beautiful and I really like it and then the last one this is what I wore with the Morganite to try and get, and I wore it with the Labia to try and get the Morganite to be a bit more pink. The Blushing Berries palette. Um, I did use the black. I don't even know if, I think I only used the first three, honestly. I didn't go dark enough because we're still kind of not back to normal. So I haven't had things to go to that require something that deep. But the formula on this is really beautiful definitely a fan I prefer this formula over the topaz and since I have the sassy siennas which gives me the vibe of the topaz I kind of think I prefer this over that if I wanted orangey looks so I don't know if the topaz obsessions would survive a declutter I'm going to go through mascaras because these are all time to be refreshed. Um, I refresh my mascaras and my um, beauty sponge in the same month. Um, but because I didn't wear makeup for five months, I just let it go. It was meant to be end of April, start of May. These were swapped. But Hourglass Caution Extreme Mascara is absolutely fantastic. I love it. Beautiful, gorgeous, like... I don't know if it's a holy grail status. Uh, it's very close between this and the Marc Jacobs. But, um, Velvet Noir. Because what's this? At Lashed. At Lashed. At Lashed. That's what this is called. Yeah, again. But this stuff is beautiful, amazing. Love it so much. The Hank and Henry Mascara. Trash. Not good. I liked the thin side for my lower lashes to get a lot of dimension, but the traditional brush was absolutely awful. A fair. Um, eyeliner. We had the uh, Maybelline The Nudes Master Drama Eyeliner in... What is this called? Uh, Pearly Taupe. This goes really well with Morganite and basically it's the same shade as Elsie Morganite so it was really nice with that it's the only time I used it and then Charlotte Tilbury Rock and Coal in Bedroom Black really nice really nice black eyeliner lips we had Colourpop Beeper I like the Colourpop lip, lippy pencil formula very nice and uh, Napoleon Pettis Pinot Noir. This is a match drier pencil formula. Formula. It is a traditional pencil pencil, not like the um, ColourPop. That's like a gel inside a pencil format. So it's much. This is much creamier than this. Um, but I know that this stays fantastically. Um, when I worked them, I would 
just wear the red lip liner with um, the glossy, their lip treatment, because the lip liner doesn't move. It is stay in place stuff. And then we had the lip products, which all were very dark. Very dark. Um, Hot Toddy is very nice. I did only wear this once. Um, I really enjoyed the Melted Matte Formula. This was very much a... Can you see the things I go for in autumn, winter? I like a burgundy. This wasn't quite burgundy, but it was very, very nice. Um, the one I definitely wore the most was the NARS Camden Girls uh, Lip Vinyl. Not Lip Vinyl. Velvet Lip Glide. Beautiful. Really love this formula. I went to pick my lip products for uh, June. And I basically picked the same colour in three different... Um, like a slightly deeper, a slightly lighter, and then a glossy version. <laughs> so I was going to get Vandal of this for this coming month, but I had to get rid of one of them. I get rid of two of them. I don't know. But this is beautiful. And then Pat McGrath's Venus in Furs. I always forget how much darker this is than the bullet. Like it looks like it's the same colour as what I'm wearing now. But it is just so much dark <laughs> like I forget that and I forget that I need to be careful with it I really actually quite like the formula of this though but I don't need more lip products in my life uh, yeah so that's that hope you guys enjoyed I will be filming my June makeup basket right now and uh, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it click subscribe to stay tuned for that June makeup basket and let me know what you've been using down below what you think of these products and love to chat i'll see you guys later bye